All right, the fifth of five games here on Fans Only Sports Network. It's Kappa Sigma and Phi Kappa Psi to declare the winner here in the 2024 Fraternity Classic. Tim Duffy, Jake McKinnon on for our final game of the night. And Jake, we've seen a lot of stuff today. We've seen everything. And, you know, we've seen Phi Psi play twice, one in both. Kappa Sigma, obviously, with the shootout win, their first game against Teak Delta Chi. And, you know, what is your biggest storyline heading into this finale? I think it's obvious. I think it's David versus Goliath right here. Cap Sig's got three of the best players on the URI team. My side chose not to take one. Instead, they're just a ragtag group of guys. Upset, two seed in the semis, looking to upset again. It'll be interesting, though, because they are switching the goalie again. Now, I'm not 100% on the names. Timmy might have to help me with that, but we had this guy in the first game, and they switched the goalies in the second game, and they're going to switch again. It'll be very interesting to see how that pays so off. So it was for him, Finn yeah. Curley the last game had Curley. a great game. Yeah. I against, thought he played phenomenal. Yeah, had a great game against Theta Kai in the victory, and now back in net who started the first game against TDX. It's Louis Alfidi. A couple names to watch that we've said so far today. I mean, on Pai side, we've seen Olsen with the puck on his stick a lot, but everything seems to run through a Chardo. I mean, he's, I think he's got a goal in every game so far. But on that other side, as we've seen before, the player you're looking at right now, number nine, Cannonball Cud. The kid can score from probably any, anywhere on the ice at any time. He's not anyone I would want to run into in a dark alley, that's for sure. The kid can play hockey, along with his two line mates, Mr. Mulhern and Bell. Don't want to run to Cannonball Cud, that's right. I mean, big number 14 on the URI hockey team. We have a couple other... You know, big UI hockey guys sitting next to us now. You don't say. You know, number two, number 24, and number eight. What's Sousa? Sousa eight again? Sousa's Sousa eight, eight now. No, he's five. Five. Now we got, he used to be eight. We got Tim, Tim Crane. Crane, the Craniac, Anthony Peschel, Ant-Man, and then just Benny. Benny, Sousa, Anthony Peschel, Tim Crane join the booth. Let's see which one of them Brave Souls wants to hop on the mic. And it's throwing the same name as me. However... <laughs> Besides all of that, it's going to be me and Jake for a one more game. Jake, thanks for coming out here today, my man. I know that you know, I appreciate the, you for letting the, me. Come the emotions out here were high. I know your team got disqualified, Lambda, you know, earlier this weekend. Exactly. So, and that's why it meant so much for me to for you to reach out and help me still be a part of this. Exactly. It, it really is. A, this is a great event that they put on for us here. You gotta you gotta take care of the homies for sure. I mean, I know there's a, there's some basketball game going on in Phoenix right now between, like, two colleges or something, but I'm pretty sure I, I, I'd be tuning into this game if I was home right now. And, you know, I we're not even watching that game either, so. No, I don't even know who's playing. I don't even know who's playing in that game. Again, big shout-out to Megan Patron for putting this all on for everybody. She's dealt with a lot of stuff, a lot of backlash, but we really appreciate everything she does for us. So nine minutes on the clock. Capsig, the number one seed, taking on the three seed, Phi Kappa Psi, who's had to win two games in thrilling fashion. They beat Theo Delta Chi 3-2 in the first game, and then they just won a shootout over Theta Chi. So in that for Cap Sig, it's, it's Matt Zuma backing on him. 32, Declan Flynn again. And in that, Louis Alfredi for five side. What's up, Doc? No, I just say we missed your second one. Yeah, how the, how the boys missed the snip? Because the Wi-Fi just ate it. That's how that's so bad. It was oh, uh, like the sickest thing ever. We got, got unbelievably turned. Yeah, it's all good. I, we were screaming. We were way too turned. We're underway here in the championship dropped. game. Five side going to throw with it. And you know, you mentioned Jake, David versus Goliath against mm -hmm. you now a bunch of guys. Five guys who are on or used to be on the URI club ice hockey team in Division One Acha. Here's one of them, Zach Bell up to as Goretzky, a former one. Bell dumps it back into the zone. It's going to pinball yeah. off the wall. As we've taken said by before, Olsen for Phi Psi. They also got two kids on the team that were on the 
Club Hockey team He's as well. one of them, Koretsky. Koretsky the puck at the on point, stick. trying to set it up for somebody. Hits out the back skate of Lunny. Uh -oh. And take it back in the direction. Here's Achardo, who scored in the first game. Up to Dylan yeah. Schultz. Back to Achardo. Achardo oh. misses it wide to the right. And Schultz, we saw him have the only shot in the shootout Whoa. that sent five Lost sides to the there. championship. Here's Two Koretsky one. leading it. Good chance. Oh. Shot goes over the top for Jeb Boyer. He had a great hey. chance, and he misses it. I'll tell you what, there was room there. There was room there. Timmy, was valiant. bro. You can tell everyone's gripping their sticks a little bit tighter in this one. No one wants to make the mistake out here. But it's really who's going to be the hero. Off the faceoff, Capsig going to win it. Here's Cud. Cud trying to get through traffic, and Cud can't. Oh! And lays a big hit. He runs into Coco Keegan, and now a big. Oh, jeez, bodies are flying. Against the wall, it's Dooley flying with Will Devaney right there. On the other end, this puck is at center ice. Tough to see with all the standing fans, but it's going to be eaten. Who scored the first of the last game against State Akai. Starting off this possession for Five Sai. Oh, Koretsky. From behind. Cud takes it away. Cud, that's Koretsky there. Took the shot and got it saved by Alfidi. Taking it back here is Cap Sig. It's Dooley. I'll tell you what. And Cud's going to keep shooting. He's not going to stop. Cud, he's always fearless, especially from that shot, from that point. Exactly. He's a threat from all parts of the ice. Charlo Just like this kid here. pocket picked by Mulhern. Koretsky trying to save it at center ice. Taken by Schultz. Dylan Schultz leading the four on three. Ooh. Schultz tries to get in there. That one goes wide of the mark. Couldn't find anyone in the slot there, but we got a two on one. Here's Boyer. Boyer got space. Boyer Ooh. got it safe. Second chance for Mulhern. He got it tonight oh, as well. Wow. And the net is going to move on that one. Tim, I'm going to be honest, I think that was probably at least the fourth helmet that's come off today. Yeah, helmet falling off, actually. Well, whoever's making those straps and those buckles on those things, we got to make a little bit tighter now. Must be some old helmets, too. Seriously. Some worn-down helmets. So, 553. They're actually going to stop it at 553. They have not stopped the clock in the first half of any game before the one-minute mark. Boyer here, he's, he, two chances in a row. He's been around the net all game so far. Now the clock picks itself back up. Here's Koretsky off the bounce. Kicks nice it over to Bell. Pass. Zach Bell, Ooh. great pass inside from around oh. the net. And losing his balance there. The, the net comes out of nowhere and knocks him down. Yeah, I mean, that was Mac Dunn just getting tripped up by the net. Jeez, that's too bad because he had Mohart wide open in the slot and all he saw was net. Yeah, Boyer yeah, he gets again right with back here. Here's Mac Dunn leading the three on two. He's got Koretsky oh! with him. Dunn gets up to the other side. Mohart, and Big what a save. play by Alfidi. Got his stick in there to intercept it. I mean, that was point blank if Mohart gets it over to Koretsky there for the first goal of the game and Kapsig can't capitalize. Schultz yeah, on the other end. Five, five sides. Got to look to try to get a shot on net here. I don't think they've tested him at all. And here's a good transfer. A chart off his stick. One timer. Shot from distance goes wide mark for Olsen. Second try. Gets knocked down by a cap six oh. player. And here is a good chance for Jeff oh. Williams from behind by Austin Ashby. And Ashby takes it back for five side. As this we are halfway sense. through this first period. Boyer gets down and makes the play and then falls on himself. That's going to be offside against Cap Sig. I'll tell you what though, Boyer has been everywhere so far in this first half. Boyer has been everywhere. He's made a lot of big plays. You can tell by the ice all over his pants. The kid's giving it all he wants, all he's got. Well. Ref's upset with something. Oh, coaches do not have their helmets on on the bench. That's a safety hazard. We're going to have to have them strap that on. I think we can agree, Jake, on this one thing about this game. This is the best uni matchup we could ask it's, for. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer. It's honestly it's perfect on the eyes. You got the red trims on the top of Cap 6. Pie size got the green over there. There's Ryan trying to set it up. 
Gamba. Ooh, Cross Gus couldn't speed. get that, that one. one's knocked down. That was Frank Woods trying to get it in there. Gam Gamba can't tap it up ahead. Gamba, the former Proud Crusader. Saw him the last couple years on Fans Only Sports. And oh! lose control of the puck. Nothing. They Frank aren't can't get there. They put Tyler the Schultz in pursuit to race up oh. after it. And they're going to blow it dead first. They're calling him. They're giving him a penalty. Yeah, they're going to call the penalty. That was late. And it's going to be on Coco Keegan. That's his second time today entering the penalty box. Look, I don't want to disrespect the refs, but that was a very late call, very sure after was. the play. I mean, I thought that was an icing with how yeah. late it was. So two minutes on the clock. Now, if Capsig decides I, to not put Shane Mulhern so on the power, power play, play for Capsig, the one seed, trying to take control of this game. As we're already 25 seconds expired on the power play in this running clock, which I think they gotta at least stop it when it starts. Championship game. I mean, come on. Here's Zach Bell around the corner. Bell. Tries to get Whoa. it inside, and Dooley, or Maloney rather, whiffs on it. Frankwoods keeps it alive in the zone, kicks the bell. We know Bell can shoot from the corner. He did it in the first game. Here's Cud. Back over to Bell. Back to Cud at the point. What Tries a block. To in there, knocked down, and sent away. Five sides going to do little things. They've been doing it all day. They're going to block shots. They're going to get that puck out of the zone. And Might not be pretty, but they're going to get results. Five sides, they've had five... Penalties against them, and they have not surrendered a power play goal. I in believe two games. I believe they're plus one on the on the penalty kill. They yeah, scored they on a the, shorthanded on the one from kill. Shoulder oh! last game. That one saved on the Maloney shot set up by Bell. Turned away. And Alfidi with another big play. Hundred seconds left here in the first half. Five sides over here with two Grade A goalies right now. They got two starters on their bench. Here's Cud racing down the ice with 30 seconds left on the power play. Cut at the point, gets tipped, goes wide of the mark, and the net moving there as well. Look, Cud, Cud will shoot from anywhere. If he was in Texas, he'd still shoot. And now we're going to bring on a special guest here. I'll let him introduce himself to you. How's it going? Uh, this is Tim Crane. Thank you for having me on the broadcast here. Tim Crane in the booth. We also have our other guy, Tim Briard. We got three Tims. In a, you know, about a five-foot vicinity, but Tim Crane, yeah, we saw you play earlier for the Tep Sammy team, the four seed. You guys lost a tough one uh, to the eventual third-place yeah. team, Teak Delta Cotton. They stopped the clock as well the minute ago, but tell me, what have you seen in this first half so far in the I've championship seen, game? I've seen a lot of good hockey. I think Kappa Sigma is controlling the game a little bit. They do have the slight edge. I mean, like we, like you guys said before the game, it is David Worth Goliath, so Cap Sig is has not been able to put one on the board yet, but they are playing well. They sure are, and I think both these teams kind of holding each other you know, to par at this point. Five side with 40 seconds left, 45 seconds left here in the first half. Turn it over, Mulhern takes it away. Good chance here for Boyer, trying to slice through. Good chance, that one saved. It found its way, just bounced over to Cole Deletti, and he gets denied by Alfidi. 30 seconds left. In a scoreless first half. Bell. Deletti. I mean, this has been a surprising first half. We talked about yeah. five side being underdogs this really this whole tournament. And you know, yeah. Goliath David's not doing too bad right now. Here's a Chardo trying to get back there. Bell wins the race first. Well, are you surprised about the scoreless first half from Cap Six? Yeah, so far. I mean I would Oh, we got a chance here. Shorter with the gun gets uh, it poked away, and that's going to end the first half. Yeah, I thought it was a very tight and competitive first half. But the first couple minutes, both teams are kind of feeling each other out. Uh, Faisai is playing with a ton of heart, as we've seen throughout this tournament. And uh, word on the street here is Alex Cutt is not feeling well before the game. He was Really? Yeah, he was laying at, in between games. He was laying down, taking a nap. I know he had a. I he is my current roommate, so I know he had a little bit of a rough night last <laughs> night. But uh, yeah, he's that could explain the uh, besides the obvious short uh, shootout winner in the game before. That could explain why he's not as big of a factor in this game as you would expect he would be. As explosive either. 
Yeah, it's but he, he, you know, he's getting his looks. He's got a couple of good looks. Yeah, he's gotten a couple half. shots. He's utilizing his. That's probably his biggest strength is his shot, and he's he's going to use that, especially as he's feeling a little off. He's going to lean on his strengths and try to put one home for Kapasik. Insider information. Spoiling the roommate. He's a little bit shaken up. Let's see if he can step up here in the last nine minutes. We're going to yeah. need it from you know, yeah, anyone they can get for Cap Sig. He's yeah, on the ice to begin the second half. Yeah, or if he's if he's still feeling hurt, let's see if there's anyone else on that Kappa Sigma roster that can step up. I know they're a very deep and talented team, but can they pull away against the scrappy five side team here in the second half? It's been scrappy for five side. Their journey to this game indeed. Schultz's shot gets saved. As we have 8.45 and counting down here before a champion is declared, barring a tie at the end of regulation. If both teams are putting their heart and soul into this game here. It's a very competitive matchup. Schultz takes it back. Couldn't get over to a Chardo. Frankwitz off the wall. And Deletti takes control of it at center ice. Cole Deletti crosses the blue line, gives it up to Dooley, or Maloney rather, and Lunny rips it away from behind for five side. Here's a Chardo coming near side. A Chardo passes it to Schultz, and that one finds its way over to Declan Flynn and makes another save as we are one minute expired here at half number two. And a quick and you know, start for five side, get a couple shots off yeah. already. And Declan Flynn has held strong for Kappa Sigma. That was, he was probably on paper their biggest weakness coming into this game, but he's proven everyone wrong here. He's played well so far. It's a team with not too many weaknesses either. Here's Shane Mulhern. Gets through traffic. Mulhern, we've seen this before, sets it up at the slot, but no one home, and Lunny knocks it away for no icing call. I, I believe Kappa Sigma is going to try to rely on their top end skull guys to carry the puck, get to the net, uh, draw some defenders to them, and then dish it off like we just see here. And here's Moher on the pass for Bell. Second chance for Boyer. He whiffs on it. Didn't get a good stick on it at all. And this one flies by a Cap Sig player. Got to get out of the way, and he does at the end of it. That was, I think that was Bell. Here's Boyer on the other end. Gets that one saved. You know, I just noticed that Fisai has switched goalies at halftime. Oh, yeah. It's Finn Curley back in net for Fisai. He's going he's gonna to finish this one off. He had a great second game in the win against Theta. Did surrender two goals in the second half to, you know, not even Jonathan Shaw, but. Hey, you seeing the puck well today. I think uh, Fisai can really rely on that here to hold strong and hopefully for them pull away with the win. And what a great first half by Louis Alfini, too, in that for five side. Getting tripped up. That's got to be a penalty, and they're going to call it from behind. It was Will Devaney getting tripped up, and this will be the first power play of the game for five side. And the five side crowd is going crazy after that call as uh, the Kappa Sigma player just got his stick caught up, and we'll see five side go to the power play here. Go the power play with six minutes left. This one, it's Patrick Maloney getting in the box for two minutes. And we've seen five side score shorthanded. Now that they yeah. have the man advantage, can they do the same thing? Let's see if they can. And, you know, we've seen them on a couple power plays today. We haven't seen a power play goal from any team today. Here's Eaton trying to change that. Gets it saved by Flynn. If that shot's going to go in, they need to get some traffic in front. Make sure Flynn can't see that shot coming in. Five and a half minutes. 90 seconds left on the power play. They already got a good shot off as this one gets hit off the wall and sent down the ice by Frankwitz. Here's Austin Ashby. And Boyer. It's a hard off the wall. Still a scoreless game. We're looking for the first goal. Still... 11 minutes into this game, it's taken away by Cud. Shorthanded, Cud tries to keep in the offensive zone, does momentarily. This is a great and only red kill jerseys there. check by Kappa Sigma. And Cud, I mean, you mentioned he wasn't feeling 100%, but he's just made a huge play there to kill off some of this power play clock. Bell down the ice. Schultz takes it back for five side. Schultz saved by Flynn. 
Second chance for Schultz. Lunny trying to help out behind the net. Schultz gets there, and Cud will fling this one down the ice again with 30 seconds left on the power play. This one's flipped. They keep it alive in the zone. That shot saved by Curley. Finn holding strong again. Denies Koretsky. Another sure-handed shot. So Cap Sig, they're applying the heat. And here's a Chardo taking it back. Final 10 of the power play. A Chardo going left. Chardo off the wall. Koretsky is there to recover it for Cap Sigma. And that is going to end the power play. Under four minutes to go. Who's going to score first, Tim? Yeah. What, what do they do to score first? We'll see if Capsick can build momentum off that great penalty kill. There's Coco Keegan following the failed power play. He turns that one over. Maloney up ahead. It's Koretsky now. Cam Koretsky scores! Koretsky puts Capsick in front with 3.30 to go. The former URI hockey player. What a has great put drive the number the one seed in a prime position to take home the hardware. What a great drive to the net by Koretsky there. He leverages his body, protects the puck, keeps it outside, cuts to the middle, and slides a five hole on Finn to go up one nothing here in the crucial dying minutes of this championship matchup. Cam Koretsky with the goal. Yeah, I had an obscene chant going in the crowd. I, I've to. never heard a crowd say that kind of language before. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have either, but Koretsky with the goal. He, he created his own shot right there, did it all himself, and, you know, maybe the dagger. And we'll see. Fyside's got something to say about this, though. And that move in there. We'll see, too. There's... Two, two and a half minutes just under left in this second half. We'll see when Fyside, or if Fyside decides to pull the goalie. They're, they're going to need to get clear possession in the offensive zone before they have an opportunity to do that. But it'll be interesting to say nonetheless. 2.13 and counting down. Fyside needs an answer cut. Giving them a question mark here. Alex cut around the corner. Trying to kill some time. This one gets tipped. Pounds over to Bell, who retreats at his own blue line. Here's Zach Bell. I think Capsig needs to get the puck deep and get on the forecheck here in order to secure a win. That's what they're trying to do here. Lunny pokes it away. Well, passes like that aren't going to do it. Situational hockey right here. I mean, they're trying to preserve this win. They turn it over. Another penalty. And now oh, some talking after out. Dooley's in there for Cap Sig. They're going to stop the clock at 90 seconds. And there is a five side player going in the box. And it's Olsen. Or rather, it's Ben Lunny. They're only taking one here. Lunny, the fifth year, going to the box. And it gives Cap Sig the advantage. And the clock's going to keep on moving, too. If there is one team that could tie it up on the Pika here, it is Fyside. We've seen it before. Now they have to clutch up and do it again with one minute remaining here in this game. And we saw them tied up on a shorthanded goal with just as much time there in the first game, in their last game against State Akai. And they're going to need it here in the next 60 seconds. Bad pass that pass has started point. off. They got that goal in the earlier game playing well sound positioning to pick up a pass and go. Let's see if they could do that again. First thing I get their stick on the puck. 40 seconds left in regulation. Bell set up for him at the point. That one goes a little bit too tall to the left. Here's Mulhern looking for the dagger. Mulhern feeds Koretsky. Tries to get it back in the middle to Boyer. That one's turned over. It's still alive. 20 ticks to go. Mohern gets by him. Schultz has a chance. Two on He's two. got a Chardo with him. Schultz, a Chardo. A Chardo gets through one. A Chardo lost the handle. Bell has it. 
final 10 ticks, the net is empty, and Zach Bell has just gotten the cherry on top. Wow. Cap Sig up two with seven seconds left. And that'll seal the deal in this game. The Cap Sig crowd's going wild. And congratulations to Cap Sig on a sure flat classic win. Unless something crazy happens in these next seven seconds. I mean, I, I can't say we've seen crazier things than if something happened, but I mean, Cap Sig, we talked about it. This was the team to beat in the tournament. And they're just going to shake hands, call this a game. And after an excellent night here at Boss Ice Arena, Cap Sig is your 2024. URI Fraternity Classic Hockey Champions. They win two games. They beat the number five seed Teak Delta Chi 3-2 in a shootout. And they win against Phi Kappa Psi, a scrappy team, 2-0 behind their three URI hockey players. And just an overall great team effort as well. Tim, I mean, you were here for all of it. You played in this tournament as well. Cap Sig, were they the best team coming into this? Yeah, they were the heavy favorites coming in. I mean, like we said before on the broadcast, they have three of the top players on the URI hockey team. They were definitely the heavy favorites. They had five players who either currently or formerly played on the club hockey team here. They were definitely heavy favorites. But props to Faisai, one hell of a tournament, came down to the wire in this championship game. A team that... To be honest, nobody really expected to make it this far, but it takes a lot of heart, a lot of grit, and props to every single guy on that Fisai roster. Yeah, Fisai had a great run to the championship. I mean, they had a huge win in their first game against Theta Delta Chi, 3-2, and then another 3-2 win in a shootout against Theta Chi. Cannot beat Cap Sigma, though as they are your champions here in 2024. Jake McKinnon, any final words? You, you're here with me for a whole lot of this day today. Gave Tim the last half of the championship game, but Jake, what are your final thoughts on this tournament? You know, watching from the sidelines as a uh, disqualified player. It was tough to watch, Tim, not being able to be out there and play, but it was almost better to watch, to see all these people come together for something. I mean, there's really no words to describe it. I mean, look at that. Cam Koretsky, game-winning goal. Hats Cam off Koretsky. to them. Half thoughts to Spies 5. Every team played great today, and I can't wait for next year, Tim. It's going to be exciting. Koretsky, the game-winning goal in the championship. They had one more for insurance at the end of things with the Zach oh. Bell empty netter, but God, you see Capsig posing. Why is Zach Bell so ugly, man? <laughs> Someone tell him to fix his hair. Good looking group of guys though. It's friendly fire. They're all <laughs> they're all teammates here, but good dudes. Tim Duffy, Jake McKinnon, Tim Crane joining in. Our great cameraman Matt Pacinos. That's all we're doing today here at the Boss Ice Arena. Cap Sig are your champions here in the URI Frat Classic of 2024 as the one seed comes in and takes care of business here in this tournament. We'll see you guys all next time.